Hello, I'm Bailey Drexler, a student at Xavier University and an intern at the Center for the Study of the American Dream. Today I'm here with Dr. William Danforth in St. Louis, Missouri to talk to him about his American Dream. I'm William Danforth. I'm a uh, physician by background. Uh, did um, take care of patients and did some scientific research and then uh, ended up uh, becoming uh, what we call Vice Chancellor for Medical Affairs and then Chancellor of Washington University here in St. Louis and now I'm retired and uh, working some for Washington U and some for the uh, Donald and Forth Plant Science Center. That is actually what I wanted to talk to you about a little bit. Um, if you can just give a brief description of what the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center is and, and what it does. I think most people, and I'll bet all of you, would like to leave this world a better place and do something good. And, they, and uh, the Plant Science Center is founded to uh, use plant science to better humankind. And we spell out three goals under that. One, one goal is to help improve nutrition and end starvation. One is to preserve and enhance the environment. And one is to um, build a very good plant science center in the St. Louis region. How does the idea for the plant science center fit in with what you consider to be the American dream? As Americans, we would have certain dreams in common. Uh, <clears throat> such as wanting our uh, political system to work very well, and we need good people doing that. <clears throat> but um, dreams of feeding the world better and dreams of preserving the environment, those are really human dreams, I think. Uh, we all live on one planet. We all share the same air. We all are dependent upon water. And uh, <clears throat> we're all dependent upon keeping the earth healthy. And uh, any one of us can, any one group can really goof it up. Can you give an example of how plant science has been used in the past to make improvements in world hunger or starvation or many of these problems that you've talked about? In the uh, 1940s, yeah, Mexico was having a lot of problems feeding its people. And uh, so, sponsored by the Rockefeller Foundation, some young scientists went down to Mexico to see what they could do about it. And they used the plant science in that day and developed some new techniques. And uh, what they uh, did was to uh, find out that a fungus was very hard on the on the wheat crop. So they bred different wheat crops, they got seeds from all over the world, and they produced some um, fungus, uh, some um, wheat that was resistant to the fungus. And they also thought, well, look, the wheat is, grows pretty tall, the winds blow, blow it over in the mud, and you lose a lot of crops that way, so why don't we see if we can grow it shorter? And why don't we see if we can uh, put more of the growth energy into the seeds and less into the stalks? And uh, then they uh, said, well, you know, it takes a long time to grow wheat. So maybe if we grew some in the cooler part of Mexico and some in a warmer part, we could have two crops a year, one, one place and one another, and we could move forward at twice the speed. And they did those things and uh, they were successful. And uh, then the, the ideas spread to um, uh, beyond the United States, the Philippines, and then to Asia, and, uh, the, um, the, and then to other parts of the world. And basically, they trebled the production per acre of important cereal crops. Now, if you think of that, three times as much 
food coming out of one acre of land. It was amazing. Nothing like that had ever happened before. And uh, all of a sudden, there was more, uh, more food to eat than there were people to uh, eat it. The mission of the Plant Science Center is to improve the human condition through plant science. And do you think that goal is attainable? And if so, how? When I was growing up, people talked about, or I read in the newspaper and heard about famines in India and China, Southeast Asia, Latin America, the Middle East. Now you almost hear nothing about those things. There's hunger in Africa, particularly in a few other places, but not the way it used to be. And uh, it's, um, that's because of the Green Revolution. While this has been happening, science has been improving. People can now get as much information in less than a second as it used to take me with my test tubes and slide rule a day to get. So science, the problems are going up like this, but so is science. And so that's the, that's the challenge for the future to keep it going. And uh, do I think we can improve things? Yes, I certainly do. Um, can we move fast enough and keep the problems from happening? Uh, it's going to be a race, and we'll have to see who wins. But you've done quite a few things throughout your career, and we want to know kind of if you have any advice for younger people who are looking to achieve their goals. How? What information do you wish you would have had starting out? One thing I would say to younger people is that uh, you have to go on learning because the world changes and what is good information today may be insufficient tomorrow. So I think rather than what I would like to have known back then is, uh, is um, the importance of uh, continuing to learn. What would I say young people should pay attention to? It's one that they're not alone in the world here. There are lots more people than you, those of us in the room. They're all over the globe. And if we're going to solve these increasingly complicated and serious problems uh, of the environment and so on, we're going to need to work together better. We're going to need more cooperation you know, than ever before in the history of the world. That's what I think. And you better learn how to get along with your fellows and understand people who aren't like you. Because there are probably a lot of the people in the room who are different from any of us here.